Ever pondered why degenerative disc disease ranks among the most common sources of back and neck pain? The answers lie in the natural aging process and the wear and tear of daily life. But what if there was a supplement that could potentially alleviate some of those problems? Enter creatine, a commonly used supplement amongst athletes and fitness enthusiasts. But how does creatine interact with degenerative disc disease? Let's dive into this intriguing topic. Creatine comes in a variety of forms, each with its unique characteristics. Monohydrate, the most researched form, offers high purity and absorption rates. Hydrochloride, on the other hand, is touted for its enhanced solubility. While ethyl ester is known for its ability to bypass the creatine transporter, due to its different absorption pathway in the body. But here's the million dollar question. Can creatine help those with degenerative disc disease? Research suggests that creatine could potentially play a role in spinal disc health. The theory is that creatine could help increase water content in the discs, maintaining their health and potentially slowing the degenerative process. However, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Creatine supplementation comes with its potential downsides. Some people might experience bloating, stomach discomfort, or even muscle cramps. It's also worth noting that the body's natural creatine production might decrease with long-term supplementation, hence the common practice of cycling creatine. Cycling involves taking the supplement for a certain period then stopping for a while to allow the body's natural production to kick back in. It's a practice often employed by athletes and bodybuilders. But could it be beneficial for those with degenerative disc disease? The jury is still out on that one. To sum it up, creatine, in its various forms, may offer some potential benefits for those with degenerative disc disease, such as increased disc hydration. However, it's not without its potential side effects and long-term use may affect the body's natural creatine production. The practice of cycling creatine might help mitigate this, but more research is needed to fully understand the implications for those with degenerative disc disease. Remember, before starting any new supplement regimen, it's always best to consult with a healthcare professional. They can provide personalized advice based on individual health needs and conditions. The world of supplements is vast and complex, but with the right information and guidance, it can be navigated with confidence and ease. That's it for today's exploration of creatine and degenerative disc disease. Until next time, stay curious and keep questioning.